Justin, you clearly knew you had a big job when you took it on. Is it bigger than you first thought? Oh, there's light at the end of the tunnel, no doubt about that. So, um, yeah, I knew it was going to be a big job, particularly where we came from, from South Africa. Um, but that said, there's been some real, some great learning. There's been some really positive stuff that's come out of this trip. On the surface, it looks like a complete disaster. But if we, we also talked about building a team that's going to be ready for the World Cup and the Ashes. I think we've got, you know, we've, we've unlocked a few answers, but we've certainly, uh, it hurts when you get beaten, particularly in England. <laughs> Russ, what's disappointed you the most, given that you have not won a game, and there's been a few guys who really haven't performed at all, what's disappointed you the most about what you What's disappointed me the most, and uh, Ricky and I were talking about before the game, I was hoping to get a result tonight because, honestly, from the, we went to the Western Front, we started building some good camaraderie. Then the guys have worked so hard. I mean, to be fair, they've worked really but, but we've been beaten by a very, very good cricket team. So what's disappointed me most is that we've, the guys have worked hard as a very, very young bowling attack particularly. Um, and we haven't taken any results away, so they have, they'll probably feel that they haven't been rewarded for all the hard work they've been doing. So that probably disappoints me the most, I think. Okay. Justin, the struggles against the spin have kind of really hit against the line. I think that must be really kind of frustrating for, you know, this is be every match the middle order kind of... Yeah, it is. I mean, we've talked about it. Actually, we've talked about this for a long time in Australian cricket, that I think we've won in India once in 45 years, is that right, Pete, or in a series? It's been a long time. So, um, uh, and, and to be fair, Moe and um, Rashid have bowled very, very well, but we've got to get better at it. There's no doubt about that. We're aware of it. Um, the thing about it in Australia, it's so different. Playing spin in Australia is so different than playing in other parts of the world. So we've got to make sure that we can give some of our young guys experience. We go to India for an Australian A tour, in a few weeks' time or a few months or a month or so's time. Uh, the only way to learn how to do it is to actually do it. Um, and we're very aware of it. We're, we're, not, we're not shying away from it. Um, again, to be, I've got great respect for the England team and their spinners this, this trip. I think Mullins bowled really well. Rashid's bowled brilliantly. Um, England have played brilliantly. As I said, I've got great respect for the way they're playing um, in all their cricket and they've certainly showing a lot of our young guys what you have to do to be successful at international cricket. I can't believe I'm even saying that. <laughs> when you have a tour like this where the results have been so bad, for young players who have their first experience of playing in England, I guess it, they can go one of two ways. How do you kind of make sure that it's not the kind of scarring way that, that they don't come back here next time and only are fearful of what, what's happening? Yeah, good question. I, 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 was telling, I was talking to BBC Somerset this morning, actually, and we talk, I was talking about, you know, it's been a tough tour. I remember my very first test match against the West Indies, and it was pretty horrific, actually. It was pretty scary. You face four um, fast West Indians and you're a skinny little kid, and it's pretty scary. And uh, I remember David Boone saying to me at one point, mate, it will, test cricket will never, ever get tougher than this. And I thought he was just being nice to me. But actually, it's so true. And I've told my first test story. I honestly reckon in corporate speaking, I would have told it at least 500 times. So I, got, I learnt something from it and I got better for it. And I'll tell you what, I was tougher for the experience. And when we, like Trent Bridge, for our young blokes to get hit for 400 and, what was it, 80-something, it does not get tougher than that. And uh, we've seen that throughout. So hopefully they'll, it'll actually add some layers to their character rather than add, adding scars to their character. Well, that might say something more about you than the situation. I mean, are, you, are you certain that these players that you've got have that character to be able to use it in the right way? Yeah, we'll find out, won't we? Uh, <clears throat> and, and there's no... For a lot of them, I, I mean... Their, our bowling attack at the moment, the actual facts and the reality are that they're very, very inexperienced. I think they had, they might have had 15 games between them. That's not much, in, that's not, so we'll find out. That's, that's the truth, we will find out. In a perfect world, you, pick, you, you bring a couple of your best young players into a really experienced team. We have, just haven't got the luxury of doing that at the moment with Steve Smith and David Warner not playing with um, three of our premier fast bowlers not playing with guys like Coulton Isle and Berendorf 
injured as well. Um, and to name a few, Mitchell Marsh isn't playing. I mean, they're, they're guys who have played a lot of international cricket. They're not in the team at the moment. So we've got young guys coming in against the best one-day team in the world. Oh, it's like it's been... I've been absolutely blown away by how well England are playing. But they've got 900 games between them, 880 games between them. They're all in good form. They're at the peak of their powers right now, and uh, we've come up against them. So a few of the boys have walked into the jungle, and we'll see if they how they go over the next, not just the next six months, but over the next two or three or ten years. They might be telling the story of going for 480 in 30 years and making plenty of cash out of it. Um, Justin, obviously you talk about England being that kind of side now, but have you sort of watched some of the ways that they've perhaps constructed innings or, or play, paced them <coughs> that perhaps Australia haven't been doing? Is that something you've been looking at? Yeah, there's so many people talking about that, about our style of play at the moment. But again, when I started playing test cricket, I could not hit them off the square, right? I literally, I hit them to third man, I hit them to fine leg, and I didn't have much else. But by the end of my career, I'd come out and I'd be swinging, I'd be playing cover drives and pull shots and hitting the spinners over the... My point of that is, is that we talk about England now, and they are got these guys who are playing brilliant cricket like they're and they're confident they've played they're scoring hundreds and they've been together for a long time so they've got to core a core team together and it's like you know they they take confidence out of that at the moment we haven't got that and what I do know is that we can we will learn lessons from how England are playing at the moment but it's hard to compare us because we're at such a different stage of our of our journey if you like because we're so young in terms of games to where they are. But we'll, we'll learn some, a lot of stuff. I thought they fielded brilliantly. I thought their running between the wickets was unbelievable. They ran us ragged. Their running between was brilliant. They fielded well. They were fearless with the, with the bat. And, you know, their spinners bowled really well as well. So, um, yeah, it's a great. But that's where they're at right at the moment. Um, we've, we've also had a lot of success for a very long period in Australian cricket in one-day cricket. So we'll learn a bit from England and we'll learn a lot from what we've done well in the past, I reckon. Justin, there's about 22 games, I think, in one day cricket to the World Cup. Does Australia have enough time to learn that, to get the core group that you're talking about? Well, again, if you, if you bring back... If, if Steve Smith and David Warner and Mitchell Marsh and Pat Cummins and Josh Hazelwood and Mitchell Stark come back in, all of a sudden you've probably got 800 games experience again. So... That, that, that all of a sudden we've got a really a lot more experienced team. And then if some of these young guys who are gaining some experience here, or the guys who have taken their up, I mean, Sean Marsh in the One Day series, he scored two hundreds. Um, Ashton Agar, I think, has been really good with the ball, and he's shown a lot with the bat. Um, Billy Stanlake's had some good games. If we can get some of those guys learning and growing and then some of our other guys are available who knows who knows what could happen in 12 months time well that's one th fact of life we don't know what's gonna happen in 12 months but that will just be natural if some of those more senior players come back in the team that's just a that's just reality Justin you mentioned the Australia A tour that obviously takes on significance now given the bulk of the test batsmen particularly in that how a how involved will you be there in in that tour if at all and how significant is it yeah, it's huge. I think we're actually going to, we'll probably pick the test team after the Australian A team. So it's a, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a great opportunity for particularly our young batsmen or any batsman in Australia. So it's very, very rare to pick a test squad after something like that. We've got a short period. Um, so it's going to be a huge tour. It's going to be exciting. I won't be at that tour um, because from about the end of September, I don't think I'm going to go home or we're not going to go home for about 18 months. So I probably won't go to India for that tour, but um, I'll certainly be watching it closely because we have to to, to um, start building the top six in the test team as well.